Little seminar for you today, podcast, seminar, whatever you want to call it. It's Promar Ahi USA Tuesday. We always start the show off talking about some Promar products, giving you the QR code, letting you know you can save a bunch of money on Promar products. And uh, we got a good show for you today, gang. We're going to be talking more about uh, the weather and lobsters and all the great things that are coming down the pipe. There's your QR code up on the screen right now. If you have some uh, some uh, burning desire to get some of that Promar product, it's available right now. You can jump on there and grab it. I'm going to talk about some of their products today on the show. We got uh, some sabikis we're going to talk about, which I know you don't even know, but you're like, oh my gosh, they make sabikis? Yeah, Promar makes the sabikis. They also make the sabiki rods. They make a couple sizes of sabikis and a couple sizes of sabiki rods. I like to use the smaller hooks on the sabikis. These are what I believe to be size 14 hook. Why? Because I want to get that smaller mackerel, the stuff's like candy to calico bass, candy to halibut, candy, candy, candy. They, they love that smaller mackerel. That's why I like to use the smaller hooks. The big mackerel have a tendency to fall off the hook when you're uh, – when you're using these smaller hooks, which is perfect. I like that. It helps me out tremendously. It allows me to catch more fish that way. So check out the sabikis. Make sure you get some of these. Have them in your tackle box. You're going to want to have them. It's going to change everything. You Once you get a bunch of mackerel in your bait tank, especially in the springtime, you're going to be super stoked because you're going to be able to catch some yellowtail. And then go th through their... Uh, catalog and get as many of these uh bait scoops as you can the bait scoop is a super important thing to have on your boat i have a couple of them all the time on the boat and i like to get the ones where the mesh is inside the frame so when you're digging on the bottom of the tank or people are playing with it or anything they're not tearing the net up if it goes over the the uh, frame then you have a tendency to tear the net up so look at the promar nets that are inside the frame, the bait scoops. You're going to be super stoked when you get one of these. So go to the Promar website, QR codes on the screen. Those of you that are driving around in your car, just put in the code YSWG and you're going to save on the product and you'll be very, very happy. And you never want to, yeah, perfect, Josh. You never want to leave the marina without some uh, sabikis on the boat. And then when you have the sabiki rod, you'll very rarely will you have to replace these sabikis and i have a good video we'll show it to you next week about the sabiki rod and how to use the sabiki we had a great new year's by the way and uh sandy i know you're watching and i have a little problem with facebook right now so i'm trying to get that all straightened up but you got your lifetime membership you're gonna be fine i got you covered and uh gang it's we got some gnarly storms coming we got a gnarly storm coming tomorrow tonight it's going to be insane lots of wind lots of rain then we get a little break on thursday afternoon and friday morning and then hang on to your hats because that storm that's coming in saturday if you go to windy.com and look the wind is going to be unbelievable. They're calling for, on Sunday morning at 8 o'clock in the morning, they're calling for 25 knots of wind on the beach in front of Dana, or in front of San Clemente. Not San Clemente Island, San Clemente, California, right on the beach. The wind is going to be unbelievable. And we're going to, I was talking to Chris Dunn, the weatherman. He's going to do his best to try to make the show here in the next week or so and talk about these crazy weather patterns we're having. And yeah, I think we're fully engaged in uh, El Nino. Anything shows us from the past. Tomorrow at noon, I'm looking at the wind right now. 25 knots at Point Vincini. 25 knots. And uh, as the day goes on, baby, it flat out gets gnarly. 30 knots of wind at 4 o'clock in the afternoon at Point Vincini. Down in just off the west end of Catalina, 
31 knots right now is what it's showing for tomorrow. So we are going to have to be very, very careful here in the next few months when we pick our spots to go fishing. It is going to be imperative that you pay attention to the game plans that come out every Thursday at 3.30 in the afternoon. When I don't sugarcoat anything, if you don't watch my podcast every day, you know I don't have a buffer. I don't have a filter. I just tell you exactly how it is. You do not want to go fishing on Wednesday. You do not want to go fishing on uh, Thursday. You do not want to go fishing on well, Friday, you do want to go fishing. You want to go fishing Friday. Then you don't want to go fishing on, a, well, Saturday looks pretty decent until 6 o'clock at night. And then hang on to your hats, gang. This is Sunday. Look at that. <laughs> you do not want to be out on the water on Sunday. You may be able to get away with it on Friday and Saturday, but keep a close, close eye. A lot of unstable air. El Nino pushing all this stuff up the coast from down here in Mexico and down at Central America. And everything's just moving up the coast. And then you got this giant low pressure system coming down. It's just absolutely mind bending the amount of weather you're going to see. Most people that have not lived in Southern California for a very long time have never really seen any weather in Southern California. But you're going to see weather pattern our weather day week after week after week because we're in an el nino mode gang i mean that's what it's showing us and chris dunn talked about a, few, a month and a half two months ago when he was on the show how el nino really is nothing to do with uh tuna and dorado and stuff in our area it has to do with water and the wind and the amount of rain we're going to get. And then we're going to get, I know we had some rain last year, but it's nothing compared to what we're going to be in store for this year. The ski resorts and everything in Southern California are getting started early, but they're going to probably be open way late into the season. There's little Marley boy sitting on my chair right behind me. If you guys don't know who Marley is, he's our buddy. He's our pal. He's our monkey. He is a little marmoset monkey, a little finger monkey, a little pygmy marmoset. He's really cool. He's super bitching, and he loves to, loves to hang out with me during the show and hang out here, and we got a lot of worms we feed him right here, and he's waiting for me to open that up so he can jump in there and get some wormies out of there. But uh, today, we're talking uh, lobsters. We're talking fishing between the storms. We're going to talk a little bit more about the ARs and the artificial reefs. We got to talk about a lot of different things today on this show. And then tomorrow we got Bill Barney coming in. And gang, I don't know if any of you listened to what I had to say yesterday about checking out Amir Comedy, but my sister did and she, her and her husband binge watched Amir last night. He's got so many great videos on YouTube. And you want to get over there and you want to watch what he's got going on because he is one funny human being and he has the same thing that we all have. He loves to fish, loves, loves, loves to fish. So you're going to love listening to his story, where he came from, how he got to the United States of America, what he's doing now. He's a professional comedian and he performs all over the place. He just got done off a big tour with Theo Vaughn. So check him out, gang. You're going to love his sense of humor. You're going to love how, how he works and how he takes care of himself on stage. And you're going to love his stories about fishing and how he's so passionate about fishing, just like all of us are. Once you got this fishing thing you're in, you can't help it. Do yourselves a favor, though, and check him out so you're ready for when he's on the show on Friday because he's going to be slinging some jokes and we're going to be having a good time, and even having him on the show isn't going to slow down the uh, funny. I'm telling you, it's going to be fun. It's going to be absolutely spectacular. And before we get going here, gang, one more time, I want to tell you all, I'm going to do it every day because I'm coming to Long Beach. I'm coming to Long Beach for the Bart Hall Fishing Tackle and Boat Show at the Long Beach Convention Center. It's a four-day show. It starts out on the uh, 25th, 26th, 27th, and 28th. 
I will be there on the 27th and the 28th on Saturday and Sunday. And I'll be speaking at 12 o'clock noon and at um, 3 o'clock. And it's going to be spectacular, gang. I'm super excited to see you. I haven't got to speak at the Bart Hall Show in, in a few years during the... We actually did the last trade show in America was the Bard Hall show right before it all holy heck broke loose. And then uh, I hadn't been up there since then. So I'll be there at the Long Beach Convention Center doing my craziness. At 12 o'clock, I'll be up with Larry Hansen, Pacific Sport Fishing Alliance. We'll be doing... We'll be telling you all about fishing with me in Alaska, and we'll be telling you all about fishing with me down in Lopez Mateos. Larry and I are putting together some great trips. We have that uh, trip to Alaska. I think there's a couple spots left. I know there's one left for the first part of the, and then uh, there's three or four spots for the second. But after the Bard Hall show, it'll all fill up. There won't be any room left. But you want to check me out. And then I got a QR code here I'm going to put up on the screen. Gang, you're going to save $2 on your ticket. Plus, it's going to allow myself and everybody over at Bard Hall to know uh, who's going because of uh, Captain Dave. Who's going? Right there. There's your QR code. Just take a picture of it. Relax, Mike Lewis. I'm going to put the QR code up now. Take a picture of it is what Elliot told me to tell you guys to do. And then come back and use the QR code later. <laughs> because you're going to want to save on the tickets. Especially if you're bringing a family of four or something like that. You want to save on the tickets. I talked to my sister. She's going to give me some stuff to give away to the children. So make sure you bring your kids to see Captain Dave speak. I don't cuss ever on stage, off stage, I might cuss a little bit if there's no children around, but I keep it clean as I possibly can, just like my podcast. You can drive around and listen to my podcast with your children in the car, and you never have to worry about me saying something inappropriate. I don't know how I do it. My dad used to say, I don't know how you do it. You have some unbelievable filter. When the lights go on, you just <laughs> click it. Because if you've ever spent any time with me outside of uh, the performances, I'm not working real clean, gang. So check out the Bard Hall Show. Grab that QR code. Don't miss it. Saturday and Sunday are going to be epic. I'm going to be free-flowing. It's going to be fun. And then Promar will show you another QR code later on down the line. But let's talk about this weather and what it means to us. It means that we are going to have some of the most spectacular, Bill Barney will tell you, spectacular surf fishing. Because... These beaches and these dredge beaches and the undredged beaches and the runoffs and the wave action and everything, it's stirring up so much food. All the fish are coming into the shoreline to feed with all this turbulence going on along the beaches right now. So surf fishing is going to be incredible. Lobster fishing is already better than we've seen. Better than I've ever seen a Long Beach Harbor. I've never seen it this good day in, day out, so consistent. And a lot of it has to do with the phenomenal amount of weather we're having. The rain, the all the different things that we're having out right now. It's incredible. Stop. Don't call me right now. Sorry, I'm trying to shut that off. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, we have just an incredible opportunity here for lobster fishing. If you guys haven't got your hoop nets yet and you haven't, don't panic. The end of the season's always better than the beginning. Justin and I were talking about that yesterday on the phone. It's so good right now. We can't even comprehend how good it's going to be at the end of the season. We're already halfway through the lobster season, gang. Lobster season ends on March 20th. Anybody that goes with Justin or Pablo and catches a big lobster, you have a chance to win a thousand U.S. dollars. Remember, I'm giving away a. Well, Kelly Girl and I are giving away a thousand US dollars out of our pocket. No sponsors are covering it. It's just us for the largest lobster caught this year with either Justin or Pablo. It can be on a guide trip or it can be on one of Justin or Pablo's charters or open party trips. And then all right now, the jackpot is five pounds. So you know that isn't going to last because before we started the contest, Justin had a handful of 
lobsters over 10 pounds. Pablo's had the same thing going on down south. I don't think he's had any 10 pounders, but he's had a lot of six and seven pounders. Gang, someone's going to win a thousand US dollars and we're going to give it away on March 20th right here on the show. And you're going to be able to know who did because Justin goes live every time he hoop nets. And Pablo is posting all the time on the community and letting everybody know what he's doing. So you, we're not going to hide the ball. We never do. I give away so much stuff all year long. But this is a big one. I haven't given away $1,000 in a couple of years. A couple of years ago, I, when the Dorado were biting wide open, I gave $1,000 US dollars to Sean Doyle. Sean watches the show. Sean's a loyal member. And uh, he can tell you. He won. The minute he won, I, I Venmoed him the money. Oh, shh, sorry, Justin. That's the jackpot right now is 8.9 pounds. Wow. Maybe I should bring Justin on the show right now. Do you guys think we should or what? Do you think, do I have time to bring him on the show? I don't even know what I'm doing. It's 8.9. You told me five pounds. Who caught an 8.9? Who caught the eight pound nine ounce lobster? Who, who, who? I don't know. I don't know, but somebody did. Justin will tell us. We'll send him a, a invite right now to jump on the show and see if he's able to come on. It's hang in there, folks. We're this is live, so just relax and understand this is live podcast. No one does it in America. So we're sending him. While we're live here, we're sending him his uh, invitation to come on the show. We'll see if he if. He comes on. He'll be on here. He can tell us why Dave doesn't even know what size the damn lobsters are. So, gang, let me know if you want to go out on that one of those trips with Justin or Pablo and have a chance to win a thousand U.S. dollars. It would be pretty spectacular. If you left a comment, why I was sending Justin, I lost all comments. We got to put up new comments if you had a question or you want something. Put the comments back up. I can see them now, but I lost them all when I jumped off for a second to send Justin that the link to jump on the show. Okay. Here's what I think you need to learn. You need to listen to Bill Barney and learn how to fish these bitches in between storms because, like Bill said, it's going to be very, very good fishing. In between storms, we don't even have to wait in between storms because Justin and Pablo are both fishing inside the harbors. Pablo's fishing inside Mission Bay and Justin's fishing inside of Long Beach LA Harbor. So when the storm's storming and doing the storming as it can be, it won't affect them. So you want to get out there with them, gang. And you don't want to, you don't want to wait and wait for Justin or Pablo to catch the big giant lobster and then say, oh. Wow, we didn't even know. Well, you know now, I just told you. So check it out. Go watch Justin or watch Pablo and what they're posting and see what all the rigmarole and all the hoopla is about this lobster thing because it's absolutely incredible. And then also on Thursday afternoons at 3.30, I put out that game plan and let everybody know what's going on. It's going to be crucial to pay attention to the game plan now as we're in the winter time and things aren't that wide open. There he is. Everybody. Justin, I'm hey. sorry. I hey. cut you short. How's what's, it the biggest, what's the biggest lobster? 8.9. And it was caught by Anthony. So what happened was is a week ago, um, I had a cancellation in my trip. And Anthony got back to me and he's like, you know, we can't just have you cancel. So he's going to do the Pokey Co. is going to charter my boat so yeah we went out and caught an 8.9 but oh, it's, that's, it's right. gonna be beat. that's gonna be beat that's actually a small one <laughs> yeah it is but okay so now we know so as far as trips go you got coming up you got some availability you got something i know you got a problem with your boat kind of explain that to everybody let everybody know what's yeah. going on and why you haven't been live the last couple of nights yeah so i have an oil leak on my boat it's not bad but I still have to get it fixed before I take it out. So I have two technicians that are um, trying to get me running. <laughs> Thanks to Dave. I, uh, he called, Jesse called me back. Um, so now I have two guys getting ready to fix this thing. And hopefully it'll be done before Friday because I have, I have trips a whole bunch lined up already. 
Thank yeah. you, Jeanette. Thanks for that. Yeah, Justin's live. If you haven't watched Justin live, it's incredible, ladies and gentlemen. It is the most riveting thing I've ever watched on TV. Coming from the world that I come from, watching Justin do it, it's so spectacular. It's so fun to watch. And Kelly Girl, I watch it all four hours. Sometimes, though, you know me, I fall asleep. But <laughs> Kelly will tell me what you caught. Yeah. But, gang, if you haven't watched it, it is so fun to watch. Let's pray together, all of us, that one of these two phenomenal – mechanics are able to get Justin's boat running because basically you have trips Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, da, 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 right? Yeah, I'm I'm pretty booked up. So thankfully, because of the members as well, um, and people knowing what's going on right now with the with my boat, um, Don, Jake's dad, said, Well, if your boat's not going, I'm hiring you to come on my boat for that five hundred dollar deal I did last year on Friday. So either way I'm going out Friday. Oh good. And he'll let you go live on his boat, right? Yeah. Yeah. Good. So we're going to at least get to see some live hoop net on Friday because what we got a storm of all storms coming in tomorrow. It's going to be mind mind bending the amount of wind and rain and everything. It's going to be so wild, gang. You're going to want to check it out. And then, uh, yeah. What do you think, Justin? Is this amazing, this weather? Yeah. You know, so everything, the, the weather, obviously, we know for sure 100% turns up those lobsters and we catch a whole bunch of them but just me going live on these shows like the full moon and everything else it's proven everything that we thought prior wrong we're catching so many lobsters on these live shows it's mind-boggling absolutely crazy so now when the storms come imagine that all those big lobsters that are hiding that know to hide don't go in the hoop nets don't do this they're going to get so stirred up they're going into the nets it's pretty spectacular. The other night was so fun watching me when you were all done on the first set with your two people. And then the way we, you and I came up with the idea, because there were some people that were very, very concerned about us breaking the law. So we mind boggled them and we did that. We left 27. We Justin could have 28 lobsters. So, there was never a time where you had more than 27 legal lobsters in the bait tank. Yeah, that's true. So um, just the other day as well, I called one of my buddies. He's a lieutenant for fishing game out here in the Inland Empire. Um, his name's Kyle Chang. And uh, I talked to him and I asked him about that whole situation. I said, listen, Kyle, am I doing this wrong? Should I not be doing that? Is it illegal? He's all, what is in your possession? I said, What? I'm all, what, what do you mean, what is in my possession? He's all, how many do you have in your possession? Because that's the law. I said, well, I had 27 and I pulled up more. He's all, were you planning on throwing those back? And I was like, yeah. He's all, okay, what's the what's the issue? Exactly. I said, so you're telling, me, you're, I'm all, so you're telling me, Kyle, that I can take the big one that I just pulled up and throw one back? He's all, immediately, yes. I'm all, well, there we go, damn. Broke the rule right there, right? And that's what I told you. Yeah. So I was okay. like, all right. So he's on <laughs> in possession. How many do you have in possession? So if you're, example, you're going out at Catalina, right? And you're fishing for white fish. You're fishing for, uh, you're using strips of squid. And you pull up a Garibaldi. Are you allowed to keep it? No, it's illegal federally, right? So you're not allowed to keep a Garibaldi. You can catch it and release it. You cannot keep it. So same thing when you pull up lobsters. If you already have your limit and you pull up more, right? Say you limit out in two in two nets and you have 10. So you have eight more to go. You still have to pull those up and you're pulling up the lobsters. What are you going to do with those? Oops, got to leave my nets out there now because there's lobsters in there. No, you're going to pull them up and dump them out. So it's in possession in possession that's the law the law states in possession at all times seven per person with a valid lobster card so yeah we're good <laughs> we're, 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 we're so good but it's fun to watch the people every once in a while gang a person will sneak through me and elliot and justin's justin's out there working he can't really be banned he doesn't have time he's trying to answer all your all your comments he's trying to stay up on everybody's stuff but every once in a while a booger eater will slide through the cracks and it happens it's just the way it is 
and they get through the cracks and they want to make all these dumbass comments. And it's just absolutely crazy to me. So I was talking with Kelly Girl this morning. I'm going to run this by all of you and Justin right now. I get 10,000 plus comments a week, gang. Most of you couldn't comprehend the vile, horrible things. Kelly Girl and I were thinking we should start taking four or five of them and reading them on air on maybe Tuesdays, just letting you see what this stuff is that's going on out there. Right now, I have a video that's my most viral video ever on my YouTube channel. I've never had a video do this. It's got over 2 million views on a short, how to dock the boat. It gets 40, 50 comments an hour right now. And they're all telling me I don't know how to dock the boat. <laughs> You've only been doing this forever. <laughs> it's so funny because it's so, a boat from five feet all the way up to 500 feet. <laughs> you and it's them. so, the way I do it is so smooth and so good. And they're just like, da, 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 da. <laughs> and it's so funny. And the other video that went viral and we bought a truck with, oh yeah, we bought your truck with it, yep. is how to tie up the boat. <laughs> <laughs> so I think if you guys want to see some of these comments, just leave a comment on here and tell me if you think that's a good idea to read the comments. One thing I promise, I won't read the people's name because we're not here to make them famous. I just want you to see some of the things that I have to listen yeah. to all the time. Yes. What I wanted to say something to you, Justin. How crazy is it? How, how hard am I watching your videos the other night when you had that net tangled? Yeah, a lot. So, so everyone, in, in case you don't know, Dave is messaging me things while I'm on the water trying to do all this, catch, catching me. He's catching me slip up. And I he's catching stuff that 100% of you are not catching. And he's not saying it on there, on the messages. He's texting it to me saying, look at that net didn't go down right. That net is tangled up. This one's over here. And I'm like, what are you talking about? So you'll see me pause on there just reading it. I'm like, what? So I'll look back. And I'm like, oh. Holy moly, I got to go back over there, you know? I got to go back over there and see what's going on. It's so funny because it's you have an eye for it. Once you get an eye for it, it never goes away, you know? So Yeah, and I'm trying. I, I'm so in. I miss it so much. I really <laughs> do. I miss going out with and doing that and taking people hooping. I used to do it every night, gang. And Justin's following right along because there's so many of you out there on – that just have never had an opportunity to do it. So like when Justin runs a trip, Pablo runs a trip, they're not looking to make a house payment off of your ticket. They're just wanting you to, they gotta, they gotta make a little bit of money, but they want you to come out and experience it. And now we're getting people that don't have the opportunity. I understand times are tough right now, but you can watch it and you can see what's going on and you can call me or Justin or Pablo. We will help you as much as we can. If, you're having a rough time and you really want to get out there, just let us know. We'll help you as much as we can, but you got to understand we're running a business here, but it is the coolest thing. I can't believe we came up with this idea, Justin, because it is so cool. And I miss that you haven't been out in a week live. I know. I miss it too. I miss being on the water, period. Talk you know, about your trip the like other day. Miss Hot Rod said, you know, when we pull up nets and we get lobsters in it, I get so excited. I guess that's how you can tell a real fisherman from not a real fisherman, right? Is because everything they catch, there's always excitement. It's like the very first one I ever caught. If we get one big one or if we get two lobsters in there, I get all crazy. I don't know. I don't know how to control it. It just comes out. I just Sometimes I'll hold myself back. I'll go, okay, okay. And like the last time we went out, you know, there was that boat that was uh, trying to figure out if we were catching or not. So I positioned the boat sideways. So they were well, hold on there. They were sitting over here looking at us. And I was like this, backed into it. So I turned the bow this way so they couldn't see our pot coming over, our net coming over. And as soon as we got it over, I was like, shh, shh. And there's like seven to ten lobsters in there. Like, don't say anything. Don't say anything. And it's hard. You want to go, woo, when that thing comes over the rail. I know. Hey, a few of our members were talking to me the other night about why do we back down on the hoops? I've tried to explain it a hundred million times. Maybe you can explain it a little bit better. Let them know why and watch the show gang. If you really want to see it, the proper way to do it, 
Justin's doing everything the exact proper way. And why is it the proper way? Well, because I had to do it for a living for a very long time with no one teaching me how to do it. And I made every mistake possible. I've I've had hoop nets in my propellers so bad that you couldn't even get them out. You had to jump in with a hacksaw and cut the... I've done everything wrong. Talk about backing up on it. Yeah, so I, I used to always go bow first in there. And I've prop fouled myself. I couldn't even tell you how many times. I've prop fouled myself a lot. And uh, this was before when I would talk to Dave, like every every now and then I would say, hey, you know, where's the lobster spots or where's this? And he would tell me, it's right when you started the, right when you started your saltwater guide. So after a while, Dave's like, you freaking better start backing up on those nets because you're just going to keep continuing pot failing yourself. So I was like, all right, fine. I'll start backing down on the nets. It's so much easier because you're in contact, your eye contact with those nets 100% of the time. Not the nets, the line or the rope, whatever you all, all want to call it. So you're okay. in contact with that line the whole time. When you go bow first over it, you lose eye contact with it. I guarantee it 100% of the time. And uh, you're going to prop file yourself. It's not a matter of if you're going to, it's when you're going to. You will do it, I promise you. And like some of you, in the very beginning when we started doing this, you know, the comments would come in, don't do that. You're going to prop file yourself. How many times do you prop file yourself? Well, most of those people that are asking have prop filed themselves because they're doing it wrong. So I'm just trying to show everyone how to do it properly. When I back down and we're in four feet of water, right? I'm looking at the bottom of the floor ocean floor and i'm backing down i know where my engines are i know how back my swims my, how far back my swim step goes and i know where the direction the slope is on that actual spot so what i'll do is i'll look always at a 45 degree angle outside the stern of your boat either the port or the left or the right side whatever you want to call it um off the stern off a 45 degree angle keep your eye in contact with that line you will not get prop out you won't get prop filed. It's just that simple. As soon as you see someone grab that line, you're going to kick your boat in the forward. Don't throttle and knock everyone off and they go flying. Just kick it in forward. Forward gear, whether you have one engine or two engines, kick it in forward. It's going to take that rope you're going to see and throw it out the back so it gets away from your prop. But yeah, 100% of the time, you have to back down. It doesn't matter if you have a, a dinghy, a 10-foot dinghy, or a uh, 68 Viking, it doesn't matter. Either way, you're gonna you're gonna back down on the ropes. And something people don't understand is it's way easier, way better maneuverability when you back in onto something than when you're going driving up bow first gang. You have no control. You have no control. As soon as I learned, and I learned it the hard way, gang. And I just was one day I was sitting out at Catalina and the wind was kind of blowing, and I'm like, God, I can't get to them bow, bowing in. I, every time I get there, I get the damn thing caught in the propeller. I'm like, why don't I back down? As soon as I started backing down, I never, ever, ever, ever got a hoop net stuck in the propeller. I got one stuck on a rudder once. It was my fault because I'm the captain, but it was actually my deckhand's fault because he did what I see some of the people on your boat do. They take all the rope and just throw it in the water. Yeah. And it's, and Justin's going, oh, he doesn't, he's not like me. I know you guys, I yell. <laughs> we were live, we were live, so I can't. <laughs> Otherwise, like Anthony was saying the other day, you're so calm on these live videos. I'm like, well, I'd be like, what the? Beep, 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 beep. Uh -huh. <laughs> but again, you, you yeah. just got to kind of understand that every single thing we're telling you and showing you is absolutely the best way. Remember, you're part of our family, if, and especially if you're a member of our website. You are so tightly woven into our family. We're not going to ever tell you anything that isn't absolutely the absolute right way to do it. I think that's why we get so many views, and that's why we have so many followers, because we don't throw fluff around. We don't pretend. We know exactly what works. Why do we know what works? Because we've been doing it for 48 years at the highest level you can think of. We've done it at the lowest level. We've done it at the highest level. Kenny Maynard, I got you covered. If you come to Cabo for your 10th birthday, I got your message. You come to Cabo for your 10th birthday. We're going fishing on one of my buddy's pongas. It's 300 bucks. You and I will split it. 
150 a piece. We'll go catch some roosters and stuff. You'll have time of your life down here. Even if we don't catch a fish, we're going to have a ball. I got you covered. And then. Uh, so like you were saying, so everyone understands this as well. When you, when you see us throw a net out, you'll see me kind of freak out a little bit, but we're live. So I'm not going to show my real way. You know, I, I start yelling and what are you doing? You know, stop this. Um, when we throw a net out off the side of the boat, always off the side of the boat. And if you take that line and you just throw it all on the water in a, in a whole wad, or you put too much out at a time, you scope too much out at a time. There's a thing called cavitation. Cavitation happens over near your prop. As you're, even if you're, you kick it forward and put it into neutral, you still have that cavitation underneath your boat and then take that line and suck it right up into your prop. As soon as you kick it in forward, you've now prop fouled yourself. You may damage something on a big boat like ours. If you um, if you throttle it too hard forward, you're going to bust the shaft. So you have to watch that cavitation. Don't put your line out too fast. You want to keep in contact with the line and the net while it's going down. So if you've seen how Anthony was doing it, um, how my wife was doing it, Amanda, and also how um, Jake was doing it, they would throw it out after I taught them a couple times and then keep in contact with that line and let it go out slowly. So no cavitation will pull the rope underneath your boat. It's bad, really bad. Yeah, it's not good. It's definitely not good. Andrew, I'm trying to understand what you're saying, but I don't understand. Five feet, FR, uh, you got chain caught in yours. I don't know. I don't know what you're trying to say, but oh yeah, what try is it, it again. Slow down and try it again. We'll try to figure out what you're trying to say. And then so, Tubby that, said he's got what? That, yeah, is Jeanette Miss Hot Rod? Yes. Okay. So Jeanette, Jake is doing fine. He's really sore. He can't be my deckhand for probably a couple months now. But he's fine. He's all bruised up. Um, he's on disability. But yeah, he's good. As long as he's good, he's uh we're all good. Yeah, no, it was pretty scary that night. If you guys don't know what happened, Justin's deckhand got in a gnarly head-on car crash on Christmas Eve night or the day after yeah, the day day before Christmas. Yeah, Chris, the day before Christmas Eve, he was on his way home from that live show and uh, his brakes felt kind of funny. So he pulled off of the freeway and when he was off the freeway completely, not, not like off, he was off the freeway. So uh, he was looking at his VIN number through the door Luckily, he wasn't outside because he wouldn't be here with us today. Um, he was looking at his VIN number through the door to give to the tow truck company. Um, someone drunk decided some lady was completely wasted, rear-ended him at 80 to 90 miles an hour. Lucky for him, he was in a big old huge work truck with a whole bunch of tools in the back that I think absorbed most of that collision. And plus the way she hit him from the back corner, she spun out and went across the whole freeway. Um, while people were zipping by, she had no lights on or anything. So a semi came and blocked the whole freeway off. Absolutely crazy. He's lucky, lucky to be here right now. Oh my gosh, so lucky. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. Sonny is watching the show right now, Justin. We feel very honored to have you watching the show. Two times, two days in a row, Sonny shows up. That's amazing. I know. What's happening, Sonny? We're going to start expecting you to show up, Sonny. Don't. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Marley's just going crazy over here playing with the sabiki. Um, so you want to know the best time to go lobster fishing? When you can go. Whenever. Yeah, whenever you can go. When From you can go. October until March 20th, <laughs> whatever. That's the best time to go. As you see us out there, I mean, we don't do great all the time. You've seen where I went out and I got eight or nine that one night, but we still got some, right? We work hard to do what we're doing. Some nights are a heck of a lot better than others. I bounce around the spot to spot and I put that out on the game plans and I put it out on the community page on your saltwater guide so everyone knows where we're going. I just had a, um, I'm going to say a different word. It's not the true place we went, but it's an example. So on the um, website, on the community page, I, uh, that's not the question. Oh, <clears throat> um, so on the community page, I put, we were in Huntington Beach off of the oil island fishing for lobsters, and we got two shy of limits. So someone asked me, 
isn't which where is that exact spot? So I did a Navionics map and I circled the exact spot I was hoop netting and I sent it to them. So now everybody knows on the whole community where I was. But while I'm out there as well, we other members will communicate with me to let me know. You'll hear them on the radio talking to me sometimes. Sometimes I turn it down. But you'll hear them talking to me and we communicate on who's doing better where. So we're all out there and we work as a team. Like the other night we were out there, we got 21, 20 something lobsters and we had Promar with us. They were on their boat and they were working in the same area, which is really cool. Oh yeah, Ben was out there. It was fun to see him out there. Gang, Tim, I see your question. Gang, we're gonna talk a little bit. We got some questions coming in for some of the members and Tim Ogilvy, I always love your questions. Why do I call the East? Why do I call the south end of St. Catalina the east end? Well, here it is, gang, and this is going to blow your mind, and you're going to go out You're going to go out in your car, and you're going to go, he's full of poop. Go take a compass and go stand on the beach, wherever you live. The California coastline, I know this is going to blow your mind, runs east to west, not north to south, okay? it. I'm sorry. I know your mom's cousin's brother's aunt told you that you go north to San Francisco and you go south to San Diego. Well, they're wrong. You go east to San Diego. You go west to San Francisco from San Clemente, California. The coastline runs east to west. The south end, what you guys think is the south end of Catalina, is actually the east end of Catalina. Well, uh, Can't see it. Oh, there it is. Yep. So same with San Clemente Island. The east end of the island is the south end of the island. The California coastline runs east to west. I'm sorry. I know this goes against everything you all learned. And please leave those comments and tell me, you're wrong, Captain Dave. You're wrong. Well, <clears throat> if I went the way you guys went, we would have never got back to the dock. The, the best way, easiest way to always figure out how to get home is to run due north zero on your compass if you run zero on your compass from out at the tanner or the cortez bank you're gonna run into the beach if you run if you run south or excuse me if you run east or west you're just gonna run up or down the coast you're never gonna get to the you're never gonna get to land 180 degrees is running straight off the beach and Zero is running straight into the beach. The California coastline runs east to west. I know, I know, I know, I know. You didn't know that. I know. I didn't know that either until I was like 12. And then my dad showed me on the compass because we got in a little argument when I was 12. And he told me, and I was, didn't believe him. So then we went down and got on the sun fun. And I'll be go to hell if the compass, all we can go by is the compass game. You can say it doesn't do that, but look at a compass. Just look at a compass. Yeah, the Cortez Bank is actually like 190 degrees from Dana Point Harbor, which would bring you almost south. It's pretty mind-boggling, folks. You don't understand it until you understand it. So that was a great question, Tim. That's and a long friend to go to get lobsters. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh, did you see also, so while well, there's a little bit of slack time right now, um, all the the all the booger eater comments on the live thresher shark fishing, a lot of people saying I'm an unsafe captain, I'm a this, I'm a that. I'm all, what? So I, I just started making the comment, you know, no, it's my first time. It's my first time. I just learned how to do this right now. It was so funny, but people people just making those comments, it really busts me up. So I don't like answering them, but that day it kind of got to me. So I had to watch what I said on live video. Hey, Brett, Cat, Cortez Bank and the Tanner Bank, they're great places to go, but they're not good for hoop netting. They're good for jumping in the water, but why would you go 110 miles out in the middle of the ocean when you can jump in the water? on the front side of Catalina where it's flat, glassy, calm, and catch just the same kind of lobsters. I never understood that. And I've been diving since I was a little kid. I got certified when I was 14. I loved to dive. But as soon as I figured out how to catch lobsters with a hoop net, it's so much more fun to stand on the back of the boat 
and with warm clothes on and not being wet, drinking coffee and pulling hoop nets and catching lobsters. It's a kick in the pants. I know it's diving is great in the nets. No one's ever dove as much as I have. I dove on every single trip I ran for a very long time. And I used to go down and get a bunch of lobsters for all the people on the boat when I was running open party, San Clemente Island with six, 44 people. And everybody would wake up with a lobster for breakfast. <laughs> I was crazy. But as soon as I figured out how to do the hoop net thing, there was no more jumping in the water in the dark and going swimming. When I was young, it was wonderful. It was a great time. But we don't do it anymore. What were you trying to say, Justin? Oh, heck, I don't know. Maybe I was reading comments. I don't remember. <laughs> I'm just listening to you. I always, okay. I always listen to you. <laughs> like, yeah, oh. Mike Lewis. Everything's kind of forwards and backwards. It's going to, it, Sunny says, front side of the island and back side of the island up there at the Channel Islands, which I don't understand that whole thing, but that's not where I grew up. That's not what I did. We call the front side of Catalina the leeward side, the, the non-weather side. That's why when you look at the Channel Islands, the way they run, they run east, they run north to south, actually, if you look at them. So, you know what we could do while we're live right now? I'll do something completely different. It's going to okay. blow everyone's mind. But yeah, keep talking. I'm going to oh, bring okay. you all through my house and with me and so on and so on. So, let's go. So, let's go that, for a while. Yeah, go. So, the, the way that the coastline runs, if you look at the Channel Islands, they're actually running north to south because they they kind of run off the beach and then like mike was saying yeah the front side coming from santa barbara would be the weather side but if i was coming up the coast i would think the front side would be like yellow banks and that kind of stuff and sunny i know you're watching so you can jump in and make a comment if you'd like that would be cool we're just trying to figure the whole thing out where are you at your jungle yeah Oh, there we yeah. go. Reader making a comment. Here we go. <clears throat> this is something not many of you know about me. <laughs> he used to have a TV show on Discovery, gang. Yep. This is a snake room. I don't know if y'all can see it, but damn. There's a bunch of snakes in there. There is. How many? Uh yeah, let me try not to get bit really quick. <laughs> That'd be great on live TV to watch you get bit by a rattlesnake. This one's slightly venomous too, so hopefully don't bite me. But here, oh, coral snake. This is a no. It's a um, tricolor hog nose. Oh yeah, he's got no. When red touches yellow, it's yeah. He's pretty. There's no yellow. <laughs> nice. He's trying to rattle his tail. Yeah, I'll show some big ones. Yeah, Justin had a TV show on Discovery Gang. If you don't know, he was a star before he ever came to work with us. What's that? This is a black king snake. Wow, that thing's beautiful. That guy's sweet. Look at that guy. The most poisonous snake I own. So the most venomous snake I own, I it's those uh, tricolor hog nose. I don't have any rattlesnakes anymore. Well, that's okay. We really didn't want you. Yeah, to I don't have any rattlesnakes. Here, I'll see if I can get bit on uh, the live show, huh? Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff going on, Rodney. I get about, I don't know, 10, 12 emails a, a day. Bit, but maybe he'll bite me. We'll see. What is that? This is a green rat snake, a baby. He likes to bite, so we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. He doesn't want to bite now, I guess. He doesn't know how little he is? No, he's a little sucker. My buddy that I posted that picture the other day, Albacore Jig Boat, he just sent me a message. He's got 50 fish in the last 30, 50 Albacore in the last 35 minutes. Oh my gosh, videos. that is crazy. That's absolutely crazy. Yeah, I think he's yeah, like, no, everyone, what? this is actually the first time, the very first time this has ever been showed live on anywhere, any stream ever, ever. I'm the only one in the United States that produces these. And the snake's worth around fifteen thousand dollars, and they bite like crazy, and it hurts. Oh, great! We're gonna grab a little stick really quick. 
So this is called an albino dinodon. And they're very bad. Ooh, look at that guy. I've never even seen one of those. That thing's rad. Yeah. There's only two people in the United States that have them. It's me. Ah. Hold on. I'm going to get bit here. Woo. Their bite hurts really bad. Oh, there you go. Ow, you son of a biscuit. Oh, so, my. Are you bleeding? Yeah. No, hold on. Who's calling me? Fish and uh, wildlife. They want to know where you live. Yeah, no, they come over to inspect my stuff. So, you, are you bleeding? Uh, are no, you bleeding yet. from that one? Here, see if I can get this one up. There you go. Here's another one. Called an albino dinodon. Hey, Jeanette's asking, hey, do you need a special license to have those? Uh, no. No, but if you sell them or anything, you have to have a, um, a special license. So it's a retail license. Oh, you see, Blade. Okay. Yeah. You don't need anything real special. Can I show you some more snakes? Hopefully, I don't get bit. These guys like to bite too. See? Snakes. Yeah. What is that? That's a uh, Brooks King Snake. That thing's beautiful. Yeah. That's a good looking animal. <laughs> yep. Not bad. Jeff. People are like, let's see. Some to... yeah. Jeff, I don't know if you know, but we had the owner of Prehistoric Pets on the podcast about three months ago. And yeah, Jay. Jay's begging to be on again. But Jeff was just saying he used to take his kids to Prehistoric Pets all the time. My kids yeah. grew up there. I told I told uh, Jay when he was on the show that I kind of, I probably bought about five years of snake and, and fish food for him because my kids would go in there and spend hundred dollars on fish food to feed those pack packos or whatever they are. The, the big uh, silver fish he has swimming around the front. Oh yeah. The, the, pa the pacus. Pacus, right. A snake that'll probably bite me in my face right now. Darren asked a question. What does it cost you to feed the snakes a week? Um, oh, well right now they're hibernating. Well, they're really cold. So this one may bite me. We'll see. Don't make them bite you. No, no, no. I don't want them to. This is a cool snake. It's called a green rat snake. Um, they're really, really cool. Really yeah, cool. yes. That's pretty bitching, gang. Cool little eyes. So, yeah, what Justin's probably going to tell everybody, I'll just jump in there. If you're thinking about getting a reptile for your children, call Justin. <laughs> Just yeah. like when Kelly, well, no, just like when I was going to get a monkey, <laughs> the dumbest thing I've ever done, the monkey I was going to buy, I wouldn't have any fingers left. I was going to get one of those Macuchians or what do they call those things? Capuchins. Capuchins. And yeah. Justin's all, do you like your fingers? And I'm like, yeah, he goes, well, you don't yeah. get one of those. They'll bite your fingers off. Yeah, so if you're gonna if you're interested in getting a snake or one for your kids, this snake right here is really good to have for your kids. They're really calm. They get kind of big, but they're really calm. This is as fast as it moves. Watch it bite me in my mouth right now. <laughs> but it's called a um, Honduran milk snake. They're really cool. And you breed those too? Yeah, yeah. So there's different kinds. There's this kind right here, and then there is. This kind right here. Oh, wow. Look at that thing. How cool is that? <laughs> yeah. All different kinds of these. <laughs> they want to visit. Cubby's like, I want to go visit. <laughs> Come on over, Cubby. Next time we're up in California, Cub, we'll go over to Justin's house and go look at all the snakes. Yeah. Mike, oh, Lewis, Mike Lewis want to know, can you crossbreed the snakes? So I can breed, ow, this thing just bit me right in my finger. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, so I, I didn't can want cross, you to put them back. I can crossbreed these two, right? 
So these are both Honduran milk snakes. You can crossbreed these and you'll come out with probably just regular, regular looking um, milk snakes. So these are, that's an albino. That's a tangerine albino. So yeah, pretty cool. Huh? Something different to add on the show. <laughs> yeah, Jeanette, he breeds them and sells them. That's his deal. That's what Justin's yeah. been doing for a long, long time. Real long time. And Jeff wanted to know, how's your wife and kids with the snakes? <laughs> um, so my, this is my kid's snake right here. This is Madden's snake. They love them. Um, I, well, oh, there we go. Um, do I need a special license to do this? You need a special license to um, sell them. So if you sell a lot, I mean, you could sell a few snakes and be all right. But when you start selling mass quantities, you need a special license. <clears throat> but I got all kinds of weird stuff. Like these guys. Ah. <laughs> kind of cool, huh? Oh, yeah. What is that? I think I on. Trying to block the light. This is a, uh, a Western hognose. It's some expensive snake, albino, so on and so on. <laughs> see. You see what Lewis said? Uh, so <clears throat> now we're going to go into storytelling. <laughs> Good. We so want to hear it. Back when I was doing Discovery Channel and I was in with um, Loma Linda University doing venom research, I had cobras and vipers and so on and so on. <clears throat> now I don't have any of that stuff, thank God. But um, I had a thing called a Macrovipera mauritanica, and it's a Moorish viper from Africa. And I had a screen top and I had a rat. And I what I did is I opened up the screen top, I threw the rat in there and I went to push it closed. I grabbed the um, the pin to, to lock it, and when I did that, the snake reached from like way on this side and came over and bit me through the screen of my finger. So there's only two places I lived out in Arizona. There's only two places that had anti venom. One was San Diego Zoo, and then the other one was Columbus, Ohio Zoo. So my buddy George Van Horn, who owns a reptile serpentarium, who does anti venom. He called San Diego, got antivenom on a plane for me, or on a helicopter for me. And in about 30 minutes, we realized that it was a dry bite. So only three people in the whole world have ever, a dry bite meaning no venom, no venom injection. So only three people in the whole world have been bitten by those. Two of them were um, bleeding out of every orifice in their body. And then the other person died. Oh, so, my God. Yeah. That kind of made me step back a little bit and rethink my stupidity <laughs> yeah i used to like oh, yeah. stupid things and that was one of them so i recommend nobody no one needs to get into venomous snakes i mean they're cool to look at just go out in the field and look at them but yeah uh, well let's a lot of people didn't see that show about a month ago or so justin caught a he was in arizona game and he caught a rattlesnake on the show live. <laughs> it was pretty epic. Yeah. He jumped in the middle of the show. He had his phone. It wasn't the clearest it could possibly be. Remember, he was in the middle of the desert, but he caught a rattlesnake live on the <laughs> podcast. Pretty spectacular. It was so hard, too, to find any uh, any reception <laughs> to go live with you. So, uh, Tim, yeah, so the myth is, is baby rattlesnakes are more deadly than a, a big rattlesnake. Okay, so... Think of it this way. This is honest to God truth. You can look it up anywhere. Trust me. I'm a freaking herpetologist. I went to school for it. So baby rattlesnakes have a small gland, right? They have a smaller face than a small gland. There's two glands on the sides on their upper lip. They're small gland. But babies don't know how to control their amount of venom injected. And every bite that they do, they will inject venom into you. So the larger rattlesnakes have a bigger gland, which is, it's like 110 times bigger than the babies, and they can control how much goes into you. Me, personally, I don't want to find out. 
So I don't, I don't really care about getting bit by either one of those because both of them are going to kill you. Um, luckily, most of the hospitals now throughout the United States carry a thing called Profab. Profab is made out of uh, like four different species of snakes. And that will cure your, not cure, but it'll um, help you with your bite. It's not very productive, but it'll still help you with your your bite. <clears throat> but I just don't want to. I don't want to find out. So, so real quick, do you use any um, Promar products on your boat? Me? Yeah. Oh yeah, a ton of it. Oh yeah, I don't have any right here. I have some in the garage. You apps? No, that's okay. You absolutely have to have those gloves. Oh, yeah. You absolutely have to have the seal proof bait tubes. You absolutely have to have their bitchin' buoys. You absolutely have to have their rigid ambush nets. Oh, yeah. There's pretty much nothing you can do lobster fishing if you don't have their products, right? Yeah. So, lobster fishing, or um, I would get it now if you all want. Tuna season this year is going to be absolutely amazing. Sorry, I got to close this up. Yeah, go ahead. Tuna seizing is, is going to be absolutely amazing. <clears throat> I would get those live deception jigs, the live deception uh, flash jigs. Also, those live deception um, cedar plugs are amazing as well. Um, and also get the regular cedar plugs because what works better than a cedar plug for trolling? To catch a wide different amount of things. Nothing. Nothing. It, cedar plugs, the original wood one, catches everything. The ones I've been very successful last year with, 2023, is the Live Deception Daisy Chain Cedar Plug in the um, anchovy. That thing was absolutely killer. I would go out on clients' boats or even my boat, and if we weren't getting bit on everything else, I would throw those out and we're bit. So, so gang, if you jump on that QR code, we're leaving it up there on the screen till we close out the show. You grab that QR code right now with the QR code, you're going to save 20%. And those of you that are listening as you're driving around, we tried to make it as fun as we could with the snakes because you can't see them. But go back and watch the show on YouTube, gang. And also, everybody, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit the uh, hit the notification bell. That way you don't miss any of these bitching shows. We do not have the capacity yet to go live on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok for these hoop net trips. So we go live only on Facebook. All I'm telling you, don't be afraid of Facebook. There's nothing bad there. Just don't look at all the garbage. Just go <laughs> watch us live and get back out. Watch us on this podcast, Monday through Friday, uh, Pacific Standard Time, 12 o'clock. We do this show live five days a week. We bring in special guests. Justin is a guy that works with me at your saltwater guide, but he's also, as you can tell, multifaceted. He's a guy, fishing guy. He's a hunting guy. He's a snake hunter, a herbatologist. Is that what you called yourself? Yeah. See, if you told me you were a herbatologist, I thought you were growing marijuana. <laughs> herp, herp, H-E-R-P. Not herb. Not herb, herb herbatologist. <laughs> nope, not that. All right. You never know what you're going to get on the show. So make sure you stay tuned every single day to watch the 12 o'clock show, right? <laughs> because you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> you just don't. We didn't have any idea we were going to get to go into the zoo today. Yeah. You got to, you get to see a monkey running around. You got to see live snakes. There's no other podcast out there like this. There's yeah. nothing like this. And then live fishing, hooping. It's pretty epic. Yeah, and one of the snakes that it's uh, one of the rarest in the whole world. And there's only two people in the United States that have them live to you today. And we just saw it right now, right here, gang. Can you imagine having a snake that costs as much as a house? Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Not a house in California. I mean a house in the Midwest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. California is almost a million. You can't even buy a tank of gas for the price of that snake in California, right? I know. Right? <laughs> That's all right, though. The governor of California is going to be your next president. How bitching is that? That's so cool. He's done such a great job with California. I'm so excited to see what he does with the rest of the United States of America. It's awesome. Yeah. That is so cool. I got nothing negative to say about anybody. You guys all vote for whoever you want. But 
your next president is is a guy that uh, is running California right now. Yeah. All yeah, right. Insurance is uh, very pricey. <clears throat> very, very pricey. So, gang, we're going to wrap things up here. I want to make sure you do not miss. Gang, do yourself a favor. If you like to laugh, go check out Amir. Amir K. Amir Comedy. You can Google it. You can YouTube it. You can Instagram it. He's got so many videos out there. He's been doing it for a very long time. I think just a little over 10 years. He's got so many great comedy bits that he does. You want to go check it out because he's my guest on Friday. And you're going to... You're going to want to have a little bit of background on him so you can uh, know who you're watching. And he loves, loves, <laughs> loves, to fish. He loves to fish. I can't wait to get him out. I told him we're going to get him out with Justin on a hoop net trip. I can't even wait to see so the, comedy, <laughs> the comedy relief on a hoop net trip. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I just got a uh, paperwork to redo my guide license. I've had it for a while, but I don't know if you all can see it. That's a uh, fishing game paperwork for guiding. Oh, yeah. Yep. And we're going to be, Justin and I and Sonny and Pablo, we'll be calling out the illegal guides this year. We're going to be taking pictures of their, because they love to post, which is, blows my mind. All these guys that are running illegal charters, and they're, they're some of the highest up the ladder superstars of fishing that are running illegal charters. We're going to show you these people and we're going to show you the illegal guides and we're going to show you their post gang. If you don't know if your guide is licensed or not, it's really easy to figure it out. Ask him to see his guide license. Yeah. If you're paying someone your hard earned money to come with you on your boat and teach you how to fish, that human being has to be licensed. It's the law. It is absolutely the law. They have to have a license. It's just there's no way around it. So if they tell you they don't have a guide license, all they're doing is stealing from guys like Justin and Pablo and Sonny and Dave Hansen. They're stealing from us because we are licensed guides. We carry all the paperwork. We carry the bond. Yeah, you have to have a bond. You have to be bonded if yep. you're a guide. We have to carry all that paperwork. We do everything oh, legal. Show my address here. And it just pisses me off. These people That's are out there taking your money, stealing your stealing money from Justin, Pablo, myself, Sonny, and then they're grabbing your money. And they they shouldn't even be on your boat. They have no idea what they're doing. They have zero ability to talk about anything except for big bluefin. Once that big bluefin leaves, there's going to be a lot of big bluefin guys out of business. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so every time also when a when an actual licensed guide comes out with you, they have to fill out this. I blocked some of it so you can't see because there's people's personal information. You have to fill this information out. That's a, a log for the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. So if they don't fill that out, you know something's wrong because if they get caught, it's a humongous fine. <clears throat> it's all good until it's not. It's all good until it's not. And also, if they're picking you up at the launch ramp, if you're on a charter and they tell you to park at the launch ramp, they're going to pick you up there. It's not a, it's an illegal charter. And guess what? If something bad happens, and I don't want bad to happen to anyone, but if something bad happened, you were on Justin's boat and something bad happened, he's carrying a phenomenal amount of insurance and you're going to be covered. Because first thing the insurance companies want to do is not pay the claim. Mm -hmm. So they're going to ask you. They're going to separate you from the owner. And they're going to say, hey, where did Justin pick you up? At? Oh, he picked us up at the launch ramp. Really? Well, let's check this out. I bet you don't have a, bet you don't have a fish and game license. I bet you didn't pay that money either. Yep, there's some scummy, scummy people out there. And we're going to expose them this year. It's going to be fun. You guys are going to get to see all kinds of cool stuff. <laughs> Cause we're not scared of anybody. So gang, thank you all very, very much for watching our show. Justin, thanks for the tour of the snakes. Yes. I've never seen that. That was rad. Yeah. I thought, why not? That yeah, was change, change cool. it up a little bit, right? So that was pretty cool. Maybe I'll That's take people live. Maybe this year we can do all kinds of weird stuff, right? Besides going to Catalina live, offshore live, local live, lobster live. 
Maybe when I'm out looking for snakes on my snake dens, we'll go live. Hmm. Ooh, that'd be fun. <laughs> that'd be fun. All right, gang, we went way over today. I know you got to get back to work. Thank you all for watching again. Don't forget, I'm going to be at the Bard Hall Fishing Tackle and Boat Show in Long Beach, California. We're giving you guys discount on the tickets. If you grab that QR code, I'm going to leave you with that real quick. And everybody that bought the lifetime membership to my to your saltwater guide, thank you all very, very much. I appreciate that. I know it took a lot of faith to believe in buying a lifetime membership to a website. I thank you all for that very, very much. Kelly Girl and I thank you. Believe me, the winter times are very slow in the sport fishing industry, but now because of our social media presence, Justin's not having much slow time. Pablo's not having much slow time. And Sonny's having slow time because he's running a big yacht now. He's a big superstar yacht captain now because of your saltwater guy. So remember everyone also, we have a, a I have a set date. It's going to be really cool. It's going to be a kid's special. And this has never been live either. Um, January 12th, it's on Friday. So not this coming Friday, but next Friday. It's going to be all pending, um, all pending my boat getting fixed by then. I hope that, I mean, I hope it's done this week. It should be. Uh, so January 12th is going to be a kid's special on my boat. I'm taking probably four kids plus my son, um, Rylan. And Rylan is going to be deckhanding and showing the kids how to do it all live for all of you. It's going to be so cool. So only positive comments, positive, because I'm going to be reading your comments to all the kids and they're going to have a great, great time. It's going to be so cool. So understand that gang. What reason Justin's saying that is because you guys are pretty much the keepers of the comments. You guys all watch these booger eaters jump on there. You're constantly pointing it out to me and Justin, and we appreciate that. And like I always say, you can attack me all day. Yeah, I have no problem. I got huge shoulders. I can handle it big time. I've been in this industry my whole life. I was one of the most hated people on Bloody Decks before you guys even knew Bloody Decks was even a thing. I've been getting hate at a level that most people can't even comprehend for a long, long time. So I can handle it. But when you go after my guides or you go after my wife, and then if you touch the children, gloves are off, gang. It's game on. Do not ever make a comment about what the children are doing because everything they're doing is absolutely 100% right. Yeah. Don't ever say they're doing it wrong. Or I'll <laughs> smack you with a brick. <laughs> and make sure you come and say hi to me. I'll be at the Long Beach show as well, walking around. Not very long though, because I'll be doing the tournament. Remember, January 27th is a tournament. Yeah. Long Beach. And then, it's going to uh, be great if you win the tournament and you yeah. also get the biggest lobster to get... The thousand dollars from Captain Dave. Wow, yeah. they're wow. gonna be pretty happy people. Yeah, all right, Justin. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you for answering comments. Why Justin and I babbled on. Everybody, Jeanette, thank you. Everybody, everybody, I can't thank you all enough. Thank you all so much. And I'll talk to you all tomorrow with the calmness of Bill Barney.